any more light here. Good morning. Praise God. It's a good day. We'll listen to little Will Regan. He's awesome. Well, we're going to chapter two of Jerry Seville this morning. I'm actually doing a double here. Facebook Live and a YouTube so I can save the video. Whew, praise God. I'm in Genesis 17, chapter 17. This is lesson two, one through seven. Genesis 17, one through seven. I will establish my covenant between me and thee and in thy seed after thee and their generations for an everlasting covenant. Well, everlasting, ha, that's a long time. The Noah Webster Dictionary defines covenant as a mutual agreement between two or more persons. An agreement between God and his people in which God makes certain promises but requires certain behavior from them in return. That's what a covenant is. I will establish. To make steadfast, firm, or stable, to settle on a, per a firm or permanent basis, to set or fix unalterably. We're going to basically go through this whole thing. It says, I will, and I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant. We did everlasting. We know that's a mutual agreement between two or more persons. An agreement between God and his people in which God makes certain promises that requires certain from behavior from them in return. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the things that has gone out of my lips. Psalm 89, 34. Hebrews 6, 13. Luckily, this is the only really long scripture here. 6, 13 through 18. For when God made his promise to Abraham, he swore by himself, since he had no one greater by whom to swear, saying, Blessing, I will certainly bless you and multiply, and I will multiply you. And so it was that he, Abraham, having waited long and endured patiently, realized and obtained in the birth of Isaac. This is in the italics. In the birth of Isaac as a pledge of what was to come. He realized and obtained what God had promised him. Men didn't swear, didn't, gosh, I can't even read the name, cut them off. Men Indeed, swear by a greater than themselves, and with them in all disputes, the oath taken for confirmation is final, ending strife. That's what they put here. Accordingly, disputes, accordingly, God also in his desire to show more convincingly and beyond doubt to those who were to inherit the promise, the unchangeableness of his purpose and plan, intervened, meditated with an oath. This was so that by two unchangeable things, his promise and his oath in which it is impossible for God ever to prove false or deceive us. We who have fled to him for refuge might have mighty indwelling strength and strong encouragement to grasp and hold fast that hope appointed for us and set before us. Basically, in a nutshell, he says, I will make thee exceedingly fruitful, successful, and prosperous. That's what he told Abraham. Genesis 24, 1 says, And Abraham was old and well stricken in age, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. It doesn't say in some things couple things, few things, it says, in all things. So he blessed him in all things. Proverbs 10.22. Oh, here's a good one. The blessings of the Lord. It maketh rich. Oh, some people don't like to hear that, but that's that's what it says right there. It's the blessing of the Lord. It maketh rich. And he addeth no sorrow with it. You know, people want to, you know, they, they think that they have to weep and cry to get God to answer them, but the Word of God says that, you know, not that God doesn't love on them when they need healing, but when you get to a point where that comes a habit and you're crying out to God for, you know, help me God, help me God, and he says, well, let it be done according to your faith, and also without faith you can't please God, you know. The blessing of the Lord that maketh rich and he added no sorrow with That's a great scripture. God said that he would establish his covenant with Abraham's seed. Genesis 26, 24. And the Lord appeared to him the same night, appeared to Isaac, and said, I am the God of Abraham thy father. Fear not, for I am with thee and will bless thee and multiply thy seed for my servant's sake. Genesis 26, 13 and 14. And Isaac became great and gained more and more until he became very wealthy and distinguished. That's the Amplified, you know. God has a plan and purpose for your life to give you a hope in the future. You know, right now in this time and age, with situations, because I know there's situations, I tell myself, well, I can't, I'm not, that, this isn't going to work. I'm not going to have enough money to do this or this, you know, but God always seems to provide. And he would do more if I'd let my faith, you know, I'm right here. 
God wants me to come up here because he, he wants to heal me inside so that I can be able to receive more from God. You know, prosper as your soul prospers. A lot of people's souls are prospering. They've, they've got this poverty mentality that, you know, God wants to keep them poor, wants to keep them sick because he's trying to teach them a lesson. And the scriptures obviously does not say that. It says that there will be no sorrow with it. Next, you see the covenant working for Jacob. This is what Jerry says. This is Jerry Seville. I'm doing a teaching out of him. This is a 52-week teaching. It's awesome. 52 lessons. It's basically 52 sermons he used. And I'm just kind of going, adding to it. You know, Genesis 30, 34. Thus the man increased and became exceedingly rich. Amplified Bible again. Genesis 33, 11. For God has dealt graciously with, graciously with me and I have everything. You know, you can't be a, if you're not blessed, how are you going to be a blessing to somebody else? How are you going to give to other people if you don't have anything? You know, that's the biggest problem, you know, like, yeah. The blessings were on Joseph even when he was a slave. Genesis 39, 2 and 3. But the Lord was with Joseph, and though he was a slave, was a successful and prosperous man. Isn't that crazy? And his master saw that the Lord was with him, that the Lord had made all he did to flourish and succeed in his, in his hand. We, The devil tries to get into our mind. With the, I, I like to say voices, because that's basically what they are. They're voices, and they're trying to tell you that, oh, you're not going to be blessed. You're not going to have anything. You're going to be broke, busted, and disgusted. You're, you're too... You're too skinny, you're too fat, you're too short, you're too tall, you've got the wrong colored eyes, blah, 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 blah. You know, he's going to use everything. And that's just not how it is because God looks at the heart. He wants to heal your soul so that you can prosper on the outside, in the inside. And, I mean, look, at he was a slave. He's in prison. Picture, picture uh, well, it uh, comes to mind, Al Capone becoming a born-again Christian and God prospering and make him flourish while he's in prison you know maybe he's in solitary confinement and god's still able to prosper him there just because he's god and he can do all things okay you know kind of a bad animal al capone but i'm just saying if he were to become a christian and god would bless him okay we're moving on from that Whew. god would never break his covenant but when man broke it the blessing stopped deuteronomy 28 1 through 14 it shall come to pass if those shall hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if those shall hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Notice he says that twice, if those shall, starts it with it and ends it with it, if those shall hear the voice of the Lord, Lord thy God. Sometimes that takes time, it takes quiet time, because the devil sure ain't going to tell you you're blessed. So you got to take time to find that still small voice, and just get alone, get away from stuff that might tell you that you're hindered. You know, I, I did a Jerry Seville yesterday, and I had somebody come in, and oh, blah, 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 ripping on him. Well, first of all, he kind of was misleading. He came in saying how great he was, but then he he, he kind of went to some other people and brought some other conversation. He had an agenda. You know, he had an agenda of what he was going to do. He didn't wasn't straightforward, but it doesn't matter. But it just makes me realize that, hey, the devil doesn't like me teaching that God wants you to prosper and be successful. You know? It's ridiculous. In order for God's blessing to come on us and overtake us, we must obey his word. We are Abraham's seeds and heirs to the promise. Galatians 3.29 If you be Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. God exceeding, God's exceeding, exceeding blessings will come on us, but only as we are obedient. Isaiah 119. So, you know, that's one of the things people say the prosperity gospel. You know, they get on them, oh, that's prosperity. Well, this is this is the guy, this is basically the prosperity gospel. And he doesn't just say you're gonna prosper. He says you need to be obedient. You know, you have to be doing what God says to do. You gotta look over his word. It ain't gonna just happen. And in waving a magic wand, they say, like Kenneth Copeland and Sue Cruffle and all they say, Well, you're just gonna be rich and God wants. That's not what they say. You know, you ain't listening to everything they say. I mean, this is this is his teachings right out of the sermon. And this is what you have to do. Isaiah 119. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat to the good of the land. Job 36, 11. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. If they listen and obey God, they will be blessed with prosperity throughout their lives. Prosperity belongs to us. 3 John 2. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. That's you know, I guarantee you every lesson's probably going to have that one scripture in it. 
Third John chapter 2, Beloved, I pray that you prosper in all things and be in health. This is your parole pleasure. You know what I do? I pray that Joel Osteen has this because I don't want to have the curse basically come back on me. I want to, in order for you to be a blessing, you need to look at it like this. Jerry was preaching this, I seen him, and it was so, it was, you either have a chance, two things in life, you either have an opportunity to bless somebody or curse them, you know. I was listening to a story with Jerry and Jesse, and they lady, this lady had driven down with their car, and they were coming from New Jersey, and they were in, like, Georgia, and this lady drove with her kids with no money, coming down there just to see that in one of their conferences, and they got there, and their car broke down, and the mom was praying, and the three kids were praying. All of a sudden, Jerry and Jesse were just a couple blocks away. They just got out of a coffee shop or something. All of a sudden, this little kid come running up to brother. Jerry, Jerry, brother uh, Jerry, and it was like, what the heck, Jerry thought? What's going on here? Well, he led them back to their car, knocked on. They seen this lady crying at her at her at her wind, at her at her steering wheel in her car, knocked on the window, and and uh, the lady was like, couldn't believe it was Jerry Savelli. Who she was come down there to the meetings. Well, make a short story short, he put her up. They gave her rooms. They paid for all his food. He had her car fixed. But what was funny is, every time he did it, Jesse was standing behind him, going, "Hey, I'm gonna have half of this blessing, so I'm gonna, I want, I'm gonna be part of this blessing. I want to bless this person too. So you, I'm paying for half of this. That's what Jesse kept saying. I'm paying for half of this. I'm not gonna not have half of this blessing. You know, you have an opportunity to be a blessing or a curse to somebody. You're gonna rip on somebody. I don't care who they are. And I'm, and I'm, I'm not perfect, because I find myself getting mad at people and doing stuff. But the more you start leaning towards blessing people and not ripping on what they're doing or who they are, the more that's going to start coming back to you and you're going to end up being a blessing. It's the law of sowing and reaping. But what's cool is the more you start tipping the scales away from the curse of cursing them, because you start ripping on people and say, well, they're this and they're not, they're not doing this and this. You know, the bottom line is, well, that's what you're going to start sowing because you're going to start sowing that in your life because that's what you're going to think about. You're going to start thinking about, oh, well, you know, you know, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to have that. I don't want to be prosperous because uh, look at them. They're prosperous. I don't want to be like them. Well, you know what? I want to be like the prosperous person. Then the scale will start tipping towards you, and then prosperity will start coming towards you, whether it be in your soul. You know, first thing you got to do is get your soul healed, and then, and then turn around, and then your spirit will start getting healed with it. And then it'll start coming out into the natural world and be blessed. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. That was the end of it. Oh, Jerry also says, Don't allow anyone to talk you out of what is rightfully yours. You have a covenant with Abraham. We've been made hairs with the promise. We've been grafted in, which is really cool. I had a friend, actually. I guess I'm not done that. Uh, John Bowen, the guy that married him, he literally lives up in uh, Webster. And he has a pear and an apple tree. They both have a pear. One side of the tree has apples, and one side of the tree has pears. It is so cool. It's just like when a Christian is grafted in to the seed of Abraham and grafted into Israel. You know, you've, it's just amazing. Will you be blessed? I pray that you have a blessed day. I pray that be, the Spirit of the Lord may be on you. That they're not going to know. Just joy, peace, in the name of Jesus. Have a blessed day. Thank you. A little late, Rayanne. <laughs> Be blessed. Everybody have a blessed day. Thanks for watching. I'm going to try to do Lesson 3 tomorrow. Lesson 3 tomorrow is the Covenant of Aiden Priest. It's really short, actually. You must have some really long ones because there's 52 in there. There's 52 sermons, basically, that Jerry Seville. This is actually really old because God, he was struggling, and God said, go back to the basics. And this is all scripture, so, so cool. Will you be blessed going in, blessed going out, blessed in the city, blessed in the country? Remember, all things have passed away. God's mercies are new every morning. So you can start over. You don't have to keep going through, going through the same thing every day. You, God's mercies are new every day. If you just sin, put it under the blood. Oh, let it run. Greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. And I just pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great day. Bye.